The city of Final Fantasy Arcade is really picking up ahead of steam, and with Ramza, Yoshitoda and Ace all being added as fresh new faces, it clearly opens up the possibility of many more characters being added to this ever-expanding roster. However, the observant among us will notice that those new characters are all protagonists, and with the antagonist side always seeming a bit lightweight, it got me thinking about the new characters that should be included on the spiritist side of the roster. There's actually quite a few potentials, so for this video at least I'm sticking with characters from main numbered games only. So without much further ado, here's 7 antagonists we need in Dissidia Final Fantasy Arcade. Zande. Alright, we've decided to start with the elephant in the room. When you look at the earlier games from the NES era, it's really slim pickings when it comes to main antagonists. There was often one primary figure that had some kind of motivation, but beyond that, many of the antagonists were extremely shallow. I mean, just look at Astos and Bike. The only ones that have a legitimate claim against the statement are Garland, who is always shown as the poster boy for what a traditional villain should be, and Zande. Now, we all know that Cloud of Darkness is the official evil representative from Final Fantasy III in the Dissidia franchise, but it feels like there should be at least a place for Zande in there too. After all, without Zande, there is no Cloud of Darkness. In reality, it's no different from them choosing to include Necron in the game over Kuja, Yu Yevon over Jekt, or Orphan over... Bartandalus, I guess? Um... <laughs> I don't really know how that one works. But I mean, I get why they chose Cloud of Darkness as opposed to those I mentioned before. For one, Cloud of Darkness has a humanoid form of some description, and if you look back, Zande actually has limited screen time in Final Fantasy III despite being mentioned a lot in the story. With earlier games starving for representation, Zande is the obvious choice to bolster the roster. Seymour Guado when the original Dissidia released, it was public knowledge that the developers were torn between including Jekt or Seymour as the antagonist for Final Fantasy X. Jekt was ultimately chosen as they felt it made more sense for Titus to have a rivalry with him as opposed to Seymour, but they did state that Seymour would have been included instead of Jekt had they chosen to use Yuna instead of Titus as the representative for Final Fantasy X. That's fair enough, I, I, I can get behind that rationale, but what I can't get behind is why Seymour wasn't included with Dissidia Duodecim. Not only did Jekt switch to representing Cosmos, which left a rather large antagonist sized hole, and let's be honest, Titus struggles to fill it, but Yuna was also added to the list of Final Fantasy X representatives, yet there was still no room for Seymour. It's also worth pointing out that irrespective of anything I've just mentioned, Seymour would be the perfect fit when thinking about the story for Dissidia. Could you imagine him parlaying with Kefka? It would be awesome! It would also mean that Anima could be added to the list of summons. Surely that is a win-win scenario. Sid Reigns. Okay, as I mentioned earlier when talking about Zande, Final Fantasy XIII is a bit of a strange game when it comes to thinking about antagonists. Both Orphan and Bartandalus are known as prominent figures in the game, but unlike previous games, neither of these characters manifest themselves in some kind of traditional form. Alright, so yes, that's technically what Galenth Dysley is, but you never actually engage with him, so it's difficult to envision how that would work in Dissidia, as the expectation just isn't there. If you go down the pecking order, the next best option is clearly Sid Reigns. His role within the story of Final Fantasy XIII positions him as something of an unwanting antagonist, and based on how Dissidia's storylines worked in the past, this would be perfect. Even without considering the story aspect, Sid Reigns just feels like he was custom built for the franchise. He has immense power due to his The Sea branding, but he also has two forms thanks to his metamorphose ability. Hello EX mode! The only slight issue is that he has no deep rooted tie with lightning, but I'd be willing to forgo that need for a connection, especially when looking at some of the other choices they made. I mean, just look at Squall and Ultimus here. Yeah, there is a relationship there, but it's not the strongest. Which brings me on to... Sifa Ormacy. How did this not just scream at the developers as something that, above all else, should have been in the original Dissidia game? I mean, just think for a second. Are there two other characters in the entire franchise who sit on opposite sides of the fence who have such an intertwined destiny as Squall and Sifa? You could argue for Cecil and Golbez, Bash and Gabrath, Titus and Jekt, but they're all essentially family feuds. Squall and Sifa, despite being orphans together, although they do forget that, just has that extra little bit of spice. With these two characters, you just have the complete antithesis. They are the near complete definition of rivalry. They compete in school, they compete in the martial arts, they compete for the same girls. Even their world changing ideals are the complete polar opposite. And that's not even getting onto how cool it would be to reenact that legendary introduction of Final Fantasy VIII. Come on guys, just put Seeker in the game already. You know you want to. Dr. Sidolphus. 
When looking at Final Fantasy XII for fresh antagonists, there's some really good options in there. My initial thought was to go to Judge Bergen for his insane combat abilities and thirst for power, but on the other hand, Dr. Sid represents something more unique and in keeping with the Dissidia franchise. Now, I know that Balthier doesn't actually feature in the current cast of characters, but Sid's inclusion would make his arrival extremely logical due to their strained relationship, and that's not mentioning the fact that Sid himself would be great to see due to his unique choice of weaponry and his relationship with Vanat. Now I appreciate that this would mean we then have two Sids in the game, both positioned as antagonists, but this in itself could end up being rather humorous, as the two could consistently be at loggerheads with each other. Professor Hojo This one's something of a red herring, as Professor Hojo has no real martial ability in either a physical or a magical sense, however we all know what Hojo is capable of thanks to his role within the Final Fantasy VII universe. I think it would be very interesting to see how Hojo's scientific mind could factor into his abilities. We all know that he has the ability to modify his form and use medicines to affect both himself and those who oppose him, so why couldn't this be the same in the Dissidia franchise? I know they have very clear combat styles at the moment, but imagine Hojo as a mix of a ranged and melee character where he has the ability to enfeeble his opponents and buff himself up and change his form. It's not really something we've seen before. And that's before we even get onto how juicy it would be to have the dynamic of the story where Sephiroth, Hojo and Cloud have to interact with each other. Beatrix If Square Enix wanted to announce a character who would land with a massive splash of giddy excitement, Beatrix, out of all the ones I've mentioned in this list, would be that character. The fandom around Beatrix cannot be underestimated. Not only is she often heralded as one of the strongest female characters in the franchise, but her military prowess would make her a formidable warrior. We've been pining for some love for Beatrix for some time now, and an inclusion in the city would be pretty special. We'd also get to hear an amazing new remix of her theme, Rose of May, which would be pretty sweet, I'm sure you'd all agree. Alright guys, so that's 7 antagonists from the main series that we think should be included in the City Arcade. Do you agree? If not, who do you think should be in the list? And be sure to check back in the future for my next video which is going to look at antagonists from the spin-offs and sequels that I also think should be included in this game. And be sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more content like this. Hope to see you soon guys, bye! What a time it is to be a fan of a specific video game franchise. Yes, you read the title of the video correctly. With yesterday's announcement of Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia, it means that Square Enix has announced 12, yes that's 12, Final Fantasy games in the past 12 months. That's a new game announced every month. Just wrap your head around that for a second. But before we get on to what those 12 games are, let's just take a step back. Can you think of another publisher who could even fathom announcing